Hey, hello, welcome. It's so good to see you here as you join us today on ESB TV. We want to take you into a session that we've been running now on a Sunday night with the congregation here in Bradford called Life Uncensored. You know, many Christians are, will settle for being impressive spiritually, but things in their practical, physical or social lives may well be falling down around them. It's the will of God for you and I to have life, not only spiritually, but physically, to the full until it overflows. And so as we get into these things, we'll talk about some nitty gritty things to do with relationships and then we throw it open, we take questions from the congregation. And my wife and I, we do our best to answer them according to the wisdom that is in the word. And we know, we know, we know that these sessions will be a blessing and a help to you. Let's learn together and let's grow together. And we'll catch up with you at the end of this broadcast. God bless you. No, I think, I think we need some help because in the scripture mm. that we've just read, um, for I say through the grace given to me, mm. to everyone who is among you not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think, mm. but to think soberly, at, this is the key for me, as God has dealt to each one a measure of faith. The measure of faith is in the grace of God that we have when we receive him mm. as our Lord and Savior. And the only, the only um, unshakable platform for a good self-esteem, a good self-image, a mm. good self-worth, is the knowledge of how precious we are to That's God. Right. It's That's the right. only thing that will never change. That's right. Because what happens, and, and this concerns me, I was listening to the radio um, coming home a couple of weeks back. Um, statistically, young men, um, the number of suicides has risen, mm. and it's in young men. Yeah. And that doesn't surprise me in mm. the, in the um, economic climate in which we live, because mm. God has wired men to provide um, to provide security, to find great reward in, in the work of their hands. So it doesn't surprise me that the very thing which gives a man a good self-image mm. um, is the thing which is, is being robbed right now. That's right. That's but right. that's essentially because e from the moment we are born, mm. um, unless we come to know God mm. and we come to know that through his grace we are accepted in the beloved mm. that's the scripture that keeps running through my mind that's it, that's it. regardless of whatever mm. else happens I'm accepted in the beloved Amen. the only reason the only unshakable reason I can accept myself is because first and foremost I'm accepted in the beloved mm. it's the only thing that's never going to change mm. and unless we come to that that sense of knowing mm. how precious we are to God <sighs> then everything else, the culture in which we live defines us. So mm. we go to school and we sit tests and we are compared with our classmates. Mm. And then we grow up and the media will define us. Mm. Um, for men, if you're not buffed and ripped, then somehow you're, you're below the bar. For women, if you're not um, the shape of a, a cello or a guitar or, you know, then you're below the bar. You know, you're, you're compared in your academic studies, you're compared in your physical prowess, you're compared in sports leagues, you're compared in temperament, you're compared in um, natural ability. Mm. And all these things will create an image which is, which is additional, but it's not mm. the grounding, it's not the foundation mm. of your own self-esteem. Now that will happen all the way through life, mm. but unless you and I get to grips with actually the only reason mm. my life is worth anything is because of the one who made me in the first place. Absolutely. That I'm fearfully and wonderfully made. Mm. I am created, which, which tells me there's an intention about my life. Absolutely. Absolutely. And that's why I'm not surprised about this whole suicide rate going up because mm. what we mm. have, what we don't know across society is that the thing which, which gives us value, the reason God created each mm. one of us to start with is to know him. Yeah. That's what gives me my inherent value. He, mm. he created me in order to know him. Mm. I'm a human being before I'm a human doing. Mm. Now, thank God that he's given us each individually mm. gifts and abilities and talents to work with. And he gave us a remit in the Garden of Eden. And he's given us a purpose which only we can fulfill. That's right. But the primary, um, the primary reason he ever created us in the first place was to know him. That's right. So whilst ever we are knowing him, <clears throat> men and women, mm. we are fulfilling the reason for our creation. That's right. And that's right. And here's the thing, sorry, because this, this is, I might as well, we might as well do this yeah, question now because it, it just fits in. Because if you don't see yourself the way that Hannah has just described, um, life will make you feel differently about yourself. Yeah, you don't have to look too far to, for people to tell you you ain't good enough. Right. What you're doing is not good enough. 
you're not tall enough, help me Jesus. You know, you're not, you don't have to, people <laughs> will run out of their way sometimes to tell you. Yeah. And so the truth is this, God loves you, you're the apple of his eye, but if you don't receive that for yourself, right. then you'll start to see yourself in an unbalanced way. Mm. And so this is one of the questions that we had and one person was brave enough to write it, but mm. I guarantee even in this room today, mm probably more than half of the people in this room today would, would identify with whatever this person wrote. Mm. They wrote this question, why is it easier to believe that God is good and he will bless somebody else, right. but I just can't believe, I mean, I talk about this a lot, but I just can't believe he's going to bless me. Mm -hmm. You know, we believe that God's a healer, but you just mm. don't believe that God will heal us. Mm -hmm. Or you believe that God's a provider, but you just don't believe that God will be good enough to provide me. And the issue is not to do with God. Mm. And the issue is not to do with faith. Right. The issue is to do with self-worth. Mm. The issue is to do with how you see yourself. Mm. And here's the reality. Mm -hmm. However you see yourself mm. will frame your life. Mm -hmm. It will frame your possibilities. Mm -hmm. Why? Because then that affects your faith. And whatever you, however you see yourself and you see yourself in your heart, mm -hmm. you'll start meditating on th th those things in your heart. Mm -hmm. And then one day out of the overflow of your heart, your mm -hmm. mouth will speak mm -hmm. and you will have what you say. Mm -hmm. It works on the plus side and it works on the negative. But here's the incredible thing about that. that um, the question indicates I'm judging myself yeah. and God's goodness to me based on there his old law, there which we go. learned this morning was fulfilled through Christ. That's it. He, That's it. That became null and void when Christ mm. Jesus fulfilled it on the cross with his own blood and he purchased yeah. each one of us. The goodness of God is no longer made available to us because of either what we do or what we don't do. Mm. God was was unendingly awesome mm. and great when he when he came to visit us in mm. in human form right. and decided I'm going to hang myself on the cross mm. and ful ev fulfill everything that I knew these these guys couldn't do by themselves because I want to bless them that's right so the fact is that God wants to be good to each one of us mm. and it's not and it never that will never ever change so mm. what we the way that we are now mm. renewing that's our minds good. is Lord I'm not going to merit myself based mm. on my own works mm. Lord I thank you that you are good to me mm. because you've already proved that in the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ and therefore Lord I'm going to receive your goodness to me I'm going to call you daddy I'm going to receive every this is amazing Ephesians 3 says that preach to me sister <laughs> preach that we know the love of God which passes mm. understanding. I've been saying, how do we, right. Lord, give me, help me to understand the love, your love for me which passes all understanding. Mm. Help me to understand that love. Because by understanding your love, it then goes on to say, I'm able to receive of your fullness. That's right. I don't know about you, but I want to receive the fullness Absolutely. of all that God is. Absolutely. He says in his word in the Psalms that he is my inheritance. Mm. And if God is my inheritance, there is nothing um, which isn't made available to mm. me. Me, all those things which you know about, you know, health and prosperity yeah. and peace of mind and, and soteria, nothing missing and nothing mm. broken is in, is in God. That's right. And his very great love, his sacrificial love made it possible for me to inherit all that mm. stuff. That's so But good. it's not because of anything I did. Mm. So I'm just like, Lord, thank you for taking the pressure off me. <laughs> and that's where I have to renew my mind because... Here's an incident I had the other day. Um, as a, as a, I gave myself a hard time. I'd, I'd been harsh with one of our children. And, um, and I sobbed. And privately, not in front of them, it has to be said. But I just thought back about the day and I was thinking, God, I was rubbish. I did that all wrong. And, and help me. And then I read the word. And I just felt like, oh, no, that's even worse. Um, <laughs> but... Then that's when, that's as soon as you have those kind of thoughts, Satan takes those thoughts and he multiplies them. That's right. And he reminds you of every other time that you've ever mm. got it wrong in that aspect of your life and how sorry you are and how you repeated that mistake again and how it's going to be the same next time around. So now my, my response is this. I'm not having it that way. Absolutely. I am the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. That's what comes mm. out of my mouth every That's time good. I feel condemned on the inside That's because good. God's not condemning me. Mm. And therefore, I'm a recipient of every blessing mm. of heaven. That's good. That's All good. Right. So what did you do to our children that made them cry? <laughs> That made me cry. Oh, that made you cry. Okay, that's okay. No, okay. I can tell you if you want. Oh, no, it's okay. I can guess. <laughs> I'm just, it just makes me feel human. I'm thinking, oh, thank you, Jesus. I'm not the only one. Wonderful. <laughs> now, this is where I want to quickly piece this together, and then we'll take some questions. Um, because if you don't see yourself well in that primary relationship you have, which is you and yourself, mm -hmm. then that will then start to spill over into the other relationships that you have. Right. 
If you're intoxicated and you can't get to grips with how you see yourself, then don't be surprised then if then suddenly that now spills over into your marriage or with your children. Why? Because, well, how can you expect to be balanced? Because from, from the center, from your start point, you're not balanced. Mm -hmm. And so what happens is then every time your, your own inward relationship touches another, right. it's as if the balance becomes more and more skewed. And actually then that's where all the problems are. Did you know, here, here's the truth in life. Most of the problems that you think lie with other people. Do you want to know the answer is not in changing them in the most part? Mm -hmm. The answer is staring right back at you in your mirror before you go to bed. Mm -hmm. And so it can start to affect these other relationships. And remember we talked about being intoxicated on champagne or on cheap plonk. Mm -hmm. Well, if you're intoxicated on an over-exaggerated opinion of yourself, you know you're better than everybody else, that will then start to affect other relationships. If you're married, you'll have a husband or a wife who rather than being your joint, your equal, you know, the one that you submit one to another to, mm -hmm. if, if one is putting it over as I'm better than the other, then you'll get home and one will, re will take the, the subservient position and, and, and either the husband or the wife, whichever one it is, they'll feel like they're not good enough. And so they'll spend all the marriage trying to justify their worth. It's the same with the kids. You know, that some, I've, I've been in houses sometimes where some parents are, 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 are so kind of, you know, impressed by their own ability. See, I only have to raise my voice and little Junior does that. But maybe what you don't know is for all you're lording it over, every time you command him, maybe something in him dies. And there'll come a time where he won't want to come to his dad when he needs him mm -hmm. because he's, all those things have been, uh, have been driven out right. of him by a domineering person. Mm -hmm. I, I know some people, and I've got to be honest, they give the impression that they're better than every human being. Mm -hmm. And sometimes I look at some people and they give the impression that they're too good for God. Mm -hmm. And it manifests, it manifests itself in this way. I've got this thing going so well. I don't need to pray. <laughs> I'm so immune to all of life's temptations. I don't need to pray. I've got life so licked. I don't need to. Yeah, everybody else needs to do those things. But I've got it so together. I don't even have to read my Bible. Really? The Bible puts it this way. After you've done all to stand, be careful. Make sure you are still standing. Because here's another spiritual truth. Everybody in life will go through a day of trouble. Mm -hmm. And it's not when things are working well that identifies the real you. It's how you can respond when the storms of life start raging. Mm. And then on the other, heart, other side, you've got people over here, remember the, the I'm so sorry and, and whatnot. It now starts to affect your other relationships because you've got to understand this in life. Whatever you put out there, mm -hmm. pe right. people will take you at face value. That's right. Oh, I'm just a nobody. Well, don't be surprised then if eventually people start walking all over you. Right. Oh, I'm just, hey, oh, hey, oh, if you want something done doing well, don't give it to me. I break everything. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and so you see how you see yourself affects the relationships that you have at home. Mm -hmm. Let me say one more thing and then we'll, take some, we'll do some questions. Here's the problem of intoxication in relationships. People tend to relate to people. And this isn't right based on weakness rather than strength. Have you ever heard this saying, opposites attract? Right. Opposites attract. Mm -hmm. That's the biggest load of rubbish. Yeah. Have you ever heard this on a soppy movie? Or I, I've, heard, I've heard Christian couples say this. Oh, you're my, so you're my soulmate. Oh, I thank you. <laughs> oh, you're my soulmate. And you complete me. <laughs> <laughs> Everything that I am not, I am. <laughs> <laughs> and however romantic that sounds, that is no basis. <laughs> that is no basis for a relationship. Do you want to know why? Because if you relate to somebody right. from the place of weakness, mm -hmm. what you're depending upon is for somebody to supply something to you that you can't do for yourself. And if they don't supply it, right. you feel less than. Mm -hmm. Relationships are not two halves. Mm -hmm. They should be two complete people mm. being strength to one another. That's right. 
And this doesn't just apply to husband, wives, boyfriend, mm -hmm. girlfriends. This also applies to friendships. Mm -hmm. Don't hang me out to dry here because this is the truth. If you've ever had a needy friend, mm -hmm. a friend who only relates to you based on what you can do for them. Oh, I'm running short this month. Can you lend me a tenner? Every time they ring you, you know, nothing good's going to come out of this. They're going to ask for something. They're going to ask for a list. Christian tongue talking and all that. You will let that call go to voicemail and all the real folks said. Amen. And rightly so. Because I don't know why we buy that rubbish. Because nobody truly believes that rubbish. People, true two-way relationships are born out of strength. The reason why I love this woman is because she's a strong woman. And when we get, if one, if one of us always feels like we're giving to the other, mm -hmm. one will become dependent on one, mm -hmm. and eventually the other one will start to resent because I'm always giving, I'm always giving. When am I going to get something back? Mm -hmm. But if you don't see yourself the right way, you can't ever, ever give something positive back. Mm -hmm. It's important. Mm -hmm. I'll close by saying this and we'll do questions. Mm -hmm. Jesus put it this way. Love your neighbor as yourself. Mm. If you can't love yourself, That's right. how can you love your neighbor? Mm -hmm. But if you can't love your neighbor, how are you going to evidence the fact that you love God? Because mm -hmm. he said, if you can't love your neighbor, you're a mm -hmm. liar. Mm -hmm. And right. all these people that people fall out with, mm -hmm. actually the issue is not to do with them. The issue is to do with their own selves. Mm -hmm. And so your natural relationships, they won't get better until you and I get better. Mm -hmm. The biggest work always starts at home. Very simple. We talk about these things all the time, how, how we can help in these areas. How do I develop a good self-esteem? Mm -hmm. Well, we talk all the time. Every time you lay up the word, you're laying up God's voice. You're starting to shape how you see yourself. And then when you lay up the word, this is what many Christians aren't good at. You lay up the word, but if you don't agree with the word that you've laid up, then we've got a problem. Mm -hmm. Because you'll be laying up all this good stuff, but then you'll be thinking, but that ain't me. You know, that applies to all the deep people, all the good people, you know, like Charles and Ike and Falaki and, and Dagger and all the people, you know, and Kevin and all that. That's all they're all. But for me, no, that, no, listen, this whole Bible, mm. it was written to you as much as it was written to Hannah. Mm -hmm. There's a good place to say amen. Mm -hmm. And so all I'm saying is this. Think highly of yourself. Mm. Is that OK? Mm. Would you say this with me from this day? From this day. I give myself a break. I give myself a break. I'm okay. I'm okay. And I'm on my way. And I'm on my way. Would you like some questions? Mm. Yes. Shall we do some? These are, these are questions that you've submitted. And I know there are more coming. You ready for the first one? <laughs> How do you deal with family and friends that are selfish? You give. I, I love this question. You <laughs> give. And you can tell this person is really feeling it because it says, you give. <laughs> and you give. <laughs> And they just take. Oh, did you write the question? <laughs> and they take. And they love yours, but they, but they refuse to share theirs. What a question. Ouch. And Hannah is here today to answer <laughs> that question. Uh, you know what? The first thing that springs to mind is... Um, is boundaries. Mm. Well, two things actually. One is emotional manipulation because relationships like that are often, um, the request often comes with an emotional twist. Mm. You know, can you, can you lend me? Otherwise, I can't. Um, can you fetch me? I can't go. And you're made, there's a, there's a playing on your emotions. But actually, um, the word deems manipulation, emotional blackmail manipulation, whatever witchcraft. you want to call it, witchcraft. Mm. If you were going to call a spade a spade, that's mm. the root of, of that manipulation. That's right. that's so right. that's the first thing. The second thing is that um, it's, it's our God-given responsibility for ourselves and for those around us to establish relational boundaries. That's right. Nobody else is going to do that for you mm. or for me. And so I believe it's important as an individual to, before God and with your household, whoever else that might affect, to determine your financial boundaries, mm. your emotional boundaries, your um, physical boundaries, mm. because um, when the request comes, whatever that request might be, you will know immediately whether or not you're able to fulfill that based on the That's predetermined right. boundaries of your life. 
I'm trying to think of, um, of an example from our lives. Um, maybe th this isn't um, about taking, 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 giving, giving, but um, a number of years ago, people would ask me in the church to do stuff, and it was all, I was of the mindset um, that I want to serve, and I want to do it because it's God's house, and I want to get it done, and, uh, <clears throat> you know, I just want to say yes. But actually, in the saying yes to absolutely everything I was ever asked to do, none of it was ever excellent, and I was absolutely knackered in the process. I wasn't doing my sorry. I wasn't doing myself a favour long term, and neither was what I. What she doing. means by knackered? I was tired. Is tired. I was run ragged. <laughs> <laughs> so the side effect of that was I was grumpy. Mm. So my friendship started to fail. Mm. At the time Mark and I were dating, our relationship started to fail because I'd given out in all these different directions. This was the relationship that I could, if you like, lean on. So I was taking from him. I was giving out there. I was taking from him. And, um, and what I learned to do, according to my time, was to say to somebody, um, just to give myself a moment's thought space, um, I, I appreciate your request. Mm. Um, I'll do my best to have a look at that, but let me just check my diary. Mm. And effectively, what that gave me was the time and the space to think, can I actually fulfill that or not? Mm. And then I'd go back to that person and either say, yeah, brilliant, or no, I can't make it work. But out of my, um, my, my boundaries then, my life just started to find a more even balance. Yeah. Um, I have to say, I've never been in the position where people have demanded of me yeah. financially but mm. I'd say it's equally important you know we 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 do we've had conversations with people um, over the years whereby we believe the primary um, covenant of any relationship aside from yours with God is yours with your spouse yeah. when you make that covenant right. and yet um, marital um, relationships can get I mean there's enough there's enough financial stuff going on in a marriage when you when the two become one there's enough to deal with financially mm. without other people putting pressure on mm. that but if you've got extra your family members saying, can I have your money? Will you send it back to me? We, our firm belief, according to the word, is that this relationship comes first mm. and your immediate dependents come first. If above and beyond that, you have the financial ability and we believe God is taking us to a place where that's possible, that you can then invest in the lives of other mm. people as well, then brilliant. The but don't sacrifice this mm. covenant relationship financially because you feel under pressure from... Yeah outside influences, whoever they may be. So here's the thing with that. Let, let's say, I have no idea, but let's say that question was coming from a husband and wife and they feel like it's always, it's always got to be a certain side of the family's way but not the other side. Here's the balance. Every husband or every wife has the right, now this is where it's important that your relationship is good and that you can have these conversations without feeling like you're judging, to actually go to your husband and wife and say, actually, there's an imbalance here mm. and we need to put it right. And if they then come back to you and say, well, let's say from the man's perspective, well, you've just got to submit. Submitting does not mean that you are the recipient of abuse. Right. That, that, ain't, that, ain't, that, ain't, that ain't submission. Right. That is slavery. Mm -hmm. A lot of wives or husbands, because it mm -hmm. works both ways, right. who are nothing more than slaves mm -hmm. in their own marriage. Mm -hmm. And so God never designed you to be a doormat. Right. You know, even when the scripture says, turn the other cheek, he only says that, you know, when, you, when somebody strikes you on one cheek, okay, he says, take the wrong, offer the other. But notice, he then doesn't say, offer your kidney. Yeah. He then doesn't say, and turn around and let him kick you up the backside. <laughs> and actually, he doesn't even say, when you turn the other cheek, that that person will be allowed to hit you. Because mm. the scriptural principle, mm. when, you, when you lay it down and let God, God right. will fight for you and vindicate right. you. But here's the thing. Mm. You are not designed to be a doormat. Mm. And so if they're refusing to hear you, mm -hmm. you have every right to put state your case clearly. Mm -hmm. And then if he or she still refuses to hear you mm -hmm. and they're not respecting the boundaries that you want drawn, now you've got to make sure that your boundaries are balanced. Mm -hmm. Then you have every right to go talk to a friend, go talk to a trusted other, because it's amazing. Uh, let me talk from the male perspective. Men are experts at uh, being stubborn. Mm -hmm. oh, yes. Amen. <laughs> <laughs> particularly, particularly when things are just within the home, things are private. Right. But the moment a man feels like he's about to be exposed, you will be amazed at how suddenly he was saying, hell will freeze over. Now he feels like, oh my gosh, they're going to know my business. Right. They'll change. Mm. Now the balance is, ladies, you don't play on that. Mm. 
the ideal scenario is that at any time I can go to and say, let's talk about this, this ain't right, let's reason together mm -hmm. and let's find a way forward. At any time she can do the same. But if you're in this point where you feel like it's a fight between something as precious as family, the issue again isn't really the families, the issue now is how you as a husband and wife, the two who have become one, it's now really how you see yourself as one married couple and you've got to get that right perspective. Well, we pray that that word ministered to you and blessed you. If you're ever in the West Yorkshire area, Hannah and I, we're offering you a personal invitation. We'd love to see you, get to know you, be a blessing to you. You're more than welcome. We meet at different times throughout the week and at any of our services, you're more than welcome. Also, you can keep in touch with us throughout the week through the wonders of social media. You can follow us on Twitter, both my wife and I. And you can also follow, the, follow us on Facebook and all those things. What on earth did we do before technology? Also, we've got an online ministry resource shop where should you want to take, feel the need to go and check that out, faith comes by hearing and hearing by the Word of God. And so there's so many different things available to you there. And also we've got a dedicated YouTube channel that you can also check out. Again, so many different messages and resources there to equip you and to help you in life. Well, until the next time, we'll see you. We're praying for you, believing God's best for you. And we'll see you soon. God bless you. Thank you for watching El Shaddai Bradford TV. For information on how to purchase our teaching products or to find out if there is an El Shaddai church near you, please visit our website at www.elshaddai.org.uk.